Hello, so today in this video, I'm going to be going over timing diagrams for a rising edge DQ flip-flop. So let's call this a rising edge. So in other words, we call this positive DQ flip-flop. So the idea of uh, a DQ flip-flop is pretty simple. So it basically says, whenever our conditions are met, so for a rising edge, um, it'll hit whenever there's a positive clock edge, um, Q will inherit the value of D. And that's really all that is. So first, let's define our clock. Mm, let's do a clock that looks something like every five nanoseconds. It's not perfect, but I think we'll get the idea. Okay, so... Um, all we have to do now is define our D signal, which will most likely be given to you. Sometimes they'll ask you to find the signal D from Q, um, but it's basically just reverse engineering um, and it's pretty simple. So we have D, so let's make D uh, a random signal here. Sorry, this should be low. Okay, so I think that's random enough. Um, and now let's find Q based off the signal. So the idea is we want to change Q whenever D is a current value uh, or a different value on a rising edge of the clock. So if you're new to this, uh, the best way to approach this is draw out where your rising edges are. So I'm just going to do that real quick in red. So this is our first rising edge. Here's our next one. Cool. All right. So now we have our rising edge triggered areas. So all we have to do is uh, see where D changes before the rising edge. If D changes on the rising edge, um, for this example, uh, we'll just say that Q follows it, but uh, you'll learn in the future that there's um, a little concept called metastability, where if the inputs change at the same time as the output should, um, you'll, you'll encounter uh, a scenario where your output doesn't know whether it should be one or zero and therefore enters a metastable state. But we'll talk about that uh, in a future video. So for Q here, uh, on this first rising edge, D is zero. So we can cross here until here, until our next rising edge, and let's approach our next rising edge. So here, D is still zero. So we're going to cross this. And here, now we get to this point, and D is uh, one before the rising edge, but let's say we need to account for, uh, I don't know, five nanoseconds of delay. So Q should cross this rising edge and about five nanoseconds after, so at the 30 nanosecond mark, it should rise for our five nanosecond delay. This right here is our delay. Now, D is still high on the next rising edge, so we can draw a line straight across. And now, before this rising edge, D is zero, so we need to account for five nanoseconds of delay again. So we cross this line for five nanoseconds, and then we go down, and then we'll continue on. Right here would be where it would normally change if there were no delay. So. This is the basics of a rising edge or positive DQ flip-flop. If you were given the scenario where it's a falling edge DQ flip-flop, 
uh, you would need to do it on the falling edges, uh, basically where the black dotted lines originally are.